right, all right. So Roddy K1993 has some great comments here. He's been on a roll. Uh, first of uh, all, I would just want to show these. Uh, he says that divorce is not a sin. That's correct. But if you remarry, and he goes on to that. Not in the future, I will do. Uh, I will cover that topic of remarriage, and I don't want to lose sight of the fact that divorce is not a sin. Okay. Um, I think sometimes it gets muddied, that idea, that thought gets muddied when you start to talk about remarriage. All right, so I just want to make that absolutely clear, divorce is not a sin, okay? And then this other comment here, Hebrews 12, verse 22, but you are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels so that's another example of Jerusalem which is above all right so you got one that's below and you got one that's above and uh, so where's your heart at is it above or is it below so that's a great uh, verse right there another great example of where our city of Jerusalem is and then here just uh, a few minutes ago he says uh, regarding where does the devil come from and it's clear to me that the devil Satan dragon serpent is all a just a spirit it's all the same thing it's, and it's all just a spirit that dwells in the heart of man if it's not for the heart of man there is not that evil spirit all right, and so uh, on that he says, "Hmm. Well, you often say trust the Bible and trust Jesus. That's very true. If your theory here in this vid is correct, then it contradicts Jesus being tempted and taken to a high place by the devil, and or that would say he had wickedness in his heart, or possibly the opportunity was there and was rejected." All right, so um, first of all, uh, let me, I'm going to go to Matthew 4, um, where this, you know, uh, where Jesus was taken up to a high place. But first of all, um, let me uh, address this. Did Jesus have wickedness in his heart? Well, you got to consider... Uh, the very fact that he was in our flesh and all right and so because he was in our flesh um, he had uh, our uh, likenesses right so which would include our heart all right so oops I'm not sure I'm where I want to be Let's do it this way. All right. So Jeremiah 17, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So um, did Jesus have the same kind of heart that we have? Yeah, he did. And so he was tempted with the same kind of temptations that we face. And he was... Um, he felt the sorrow and the pains that we feel and not only that he just be um, like just like we're gonna die he died so everything that we experience he experienced all right so there's no question at all that that uh, that wickedness if you will was in his heart and so he was tempted by that wickedness uh, that is in our heart so he knew it he understands what we're going through and he went through it himself now, that doesn't mean that he was wicked it just means our body is not made perfect uh, that should be pretty obvious right uh, so we always uh, in our life in this life here uh, we are faced with these uh, struggles of the flesh, if you will. And he was—he faced them too. 
him being greater than us, he never gave in to those temptations. He never committed any sin, even though he was in this body of sin. And he died. And get, you know, he gave his life so that through him we might have eternal life. So, um, I think that's a great comment. I really do. I think uh, to talk about stuff like this, it helps me and hopefully it, it can help you as well. Um, just to understand that, you know, this flesh, this body that we are in is not perfect, not even close. And God manifests himself into this body that we struggle in and he overcame that struggle and resurrected back to life and has ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for those of us that believe in him yeah, that's incredible really uh, it's amazing so let's go to matthew 4 and sort of get specific on this i hope i got the right place the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil takes him up unto into the holy city and setteth him upon a pinnacle of the temple. Uh, is this the top of the pyramid? It almost sounds like it. Okay, so that's another subject. And then the devil takes him up to an exceeding high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Now, uh, this devil was an uh, evil spirit in another man. Uh, that's what I believe. All right. I guess you could argue... Um, I guess you could argue it was only a spirit, not a man. You might be able to argue that. Could I? I don't know if I could. Where's the other mention here? Is it Mark four? Uh, no, 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 no. Where's the other mention at? There's another mention of this. I apologize. Let me think. Is it Luke four? Maybe I had her right. No, right here it is. Okay, and the devil taking him up to a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Uh, full of the Holy Ghost, returned led by the Spirit in the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And the devil said unto him, Okay, so, you know what? I think that would be correct to say that this was spirit only, and the spirit that was within him himself because he was in our flesh I think that would be fair argument to make but uh, the reason I bring that up is because if we go to like Matthew 16 for example you know I like to use this as it there's a lot of good stuff to be learned from this when uh, first of all um, Jesus asked uh, whom do men say that I am and some say John the Baptist, some Elias, uh, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he gets specific, but whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so the church of Jesus Christ is built on the fact that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's not built on Peter. I mean, come on. Uh, okay, so it's not, it's built on the fact that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, we'll leave that one alone. So now uh, we go down a few verses, and you know, Jesus tells them, Hey, look, these guys, they're gonna, you know, come after me, they're gonna get me, and they're gonna kill me, and then I'm gonna be raised again on the third day. And Peter's, No, no, I'm not gonna let that happen. <laughs> and 
Jesus turns to him and says, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. He calls Peter Satan, and Satan, the devil, serpent, dragon, it's all the same thing. So he's calling Peter Satan. Why? Because he was speaking in this evil spirit that comes from his heart. All right, and it just, oh, it's only because Peter didn't understand. All right, that's all. He didn't understand, and Jesus uh, rebuked him. And through this moment, uh, this is a great learning opportunity, right? We see things like this all throughout the Bible, and even in our own lives, learning opportunities. This is one of them. All right, so it doesn't mean that Peter was Satan. It just means that um, when he spoke those words, he did not speak in the spirit of God, but rather in the spirit of evil. All right. So now I'm trying to make this real simple, right? So that we can all understand. And then, of course, I want to go back to what I shared in the video. And the drought, of course, means toilet. All right. In Jesus, in Matthew 15, the chapter before Matthew 16, he says, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the toilet? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart, Proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. So all the evilness in the world comes from the human heart. And then let me share another verse here that I think I might have overlooked. Um, the other day when I made that first video. Okay, in 1 Timothy 6, verse 10, <clears throat> For the love of money is the root of all evil, all right, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money is the root of all evil. Okay, so first of all, let me just say, it's not money that's the root of all evil. If money was the root of all evil, I would be pure as the driven snow because I ain't got any. No. But the love of money. So the love of money is the root of all evil. And where does this love stem from? It stems from the heart. So this love of money comes from the heart and this love of money is the root of of all evil. All right, so uh, that's a great comment. I appreciate that very much. And I certainly do appreciate uh, the challenge, you know. I mean, that's what we ought to be doing. Challenging one another, talking about one another, uh, talking about these things with one another. And what is there? There's a verse here. Uh, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So let's continue this discussion all right let's continue with uh, if there's any doubts man I'm telling you by you asking the question and you're gonna help me and you're gonna help yourself as well and by me giving a response to your comment it's gonna help me just as much as it's gonna help you right so this is uh, you know, this is really what I want people to do is to really try to, you know, stick it to me, right? I mean, try to trip me up because that's how we make one another sharp, right? This is how we strengthen one another by challenging one another and discussing these things and, and talking about them, right? So I appreciate that uh, comment very much. Now, there's nothing productive that's going to come from a comment that says oh you're stupid ha ha you know that's great yeah i'm stupid i know that and that's funny okay but explain why i'm stupid 
or explain what disagreement you might have. That's productive. And that's a good job out of Roddy K, 1993. Uh, appreciate it.